It's so hard to describe this. Hello everyone, my name is Kayla and I am back. It's been a little while and I'm gonna blame it purely on summer chaos with my little one being home from school. So it's been a crazy summer. I hope you all had a lovely summer, had some fantastic reads. Leave a comment below. I'd love to know what you've all been reading. I've missed out on so much. I am so far behind. I'd love to hear what everyone's reading, what you're excited to read in the fall, all of it. Leave your comments below. Before we start the episode, I just want to get rid of some housekeeping items just to catch you up all on what's been going on behind the scenes. Like I said, there has been summer chaos with my little one home and that included some temper tantrums, which my glasses became the victim of. So no glasses for a little bit, just as they are put somewhere more safe in order to not have them destroyed. In the meantime, I also over the summer had some laser eye treatment done as I had thinning and holes in my retina. And actually at the time of recording this, I had one done yesterday. So my eyes might seem a little puffy or off. It's because of that. So that has been taken care of. Luckily, I am going to be monitoring it with my optometrist to make sure that it doesn't progress and if it does we're on top of things just to make sure that everything is okay with my sight these things happen and what's most important is to just keep taking care of it before it becomes a problem. I also recently came back from a vacation over in Newfoundland. This was to visit some family, but I mean, it was a blast of a week. It went by way too quickly and it is just a stunning and beautiful place. I'll try and put some clips here for you and Man, it, it was just a wonderful trip, honestly, to be able to see family, to see these beautiful sights, and to hear some awesome music. So with the chaos that was summer, that meant I didn't read as much as I normally do. My free time was dwindled down to maybe a few hours a week and well, yeah, my reading suffered quite a bit. I did manage to read a few books over the course of the summer, so I thought I'd share the ones that I did read and haven't updated you on, and then we'll talk about the books that I am currently reading at the moment. First up is The Gallant by Janie Wirtz. Now, I've been wanting to delve into Janie's writing for a little while, and among the ex-Twitter world, I had made a post. She responded with her recommendation on where I should begin, and this was her recommendation on where to start in her books. Now, I am probably going to butcher these names, and I am so sorry if I do that, but this story follows Varane de Siant and his love interest, Lysane, as a political plot unfolds around Varane in order to leave him in a state of madness to inevitably reveal political secrets and it's just a diabolical way of doing that. Throughout this novella, Lysane sacrifices everything in order to care for Varane, who has essentially been written off as a vulnerability to the political people involved. And despite the judgment and harrowing circumstances and dangers ahead, Lysane stays by his side throughout it all. And it's incredibly endearing to go through that journey with the two of them. Now, the first half is also filled with political schemes and those romantic entanglements but the second half really pulled the rug out from under me as it shifted into a beguiling exploration of self-sacrifice, a person's character, and the birth of legends. And I did mention that the romance did feel a little on the dramatic side for me. However, like I said, it does shift. Typically, I'm not a romance reader, and I was uncertain if this novella would be for me for that reason. I prefer genuine relationships, and I will say that where it did feel like it started a bit on the dramatic side or that puppy type of first love style of romance, it does develop 
into something incredible the more you read, and I really did appreciate that. As a result, the more I read and finishing the story brings these characters' arcs and their relationship into a completely different light than where they originally start. This is a novella, it's around a hundred and some pages, but at the same time it felt like a much bigger story because of the depth and all the aspects that are put into this. There's so many events that happen in this novella. I can't even sum them up in this because it would be spoilery, but there is a lot that goes on and it was so, so worth the journey. All that to say, looking back at the first 20%, knowing where these characters are going, what they will go through, and how they end up reveals just how much of a love story this is. It's just impeccable with the character work and it serves as a reminder to never judge a book by its cover. And like I said, there's just so much more to this. There are magical encounters, beasts, captivating world building, and it's all matched with a steady pacing which really helped me to keep reading and wanting to know and there was never a dull moment as events just continued to propel the story forward with political machinations, shock, intrigue, action, and heartache all blended in. This really was a whopper of a novella. I took my time reading it and overall it took me a couple of months because I really wanted to soak up everything this novella had to offer and honestly that was probably the best thing I could have done in terms of my own reading experience. Whether or not this book is for everyone, I honestly think just give it a try and find out for yourself because like I said, I was apprehensive a little bit in terms of the romance because I know that's not for me, but like I said, my perspective shifted as I read, so you never know if this will be for you. I highly recommend giving it a try and finding out if this is something you might enjoy as a starter to Jenny Wirt's writing. And if not, I mean, she's got a ton of other books, so take your pick. After that, I read another novella, and that was The Genesis of Change by Livia J. Elliott. Now, I did receive this copy from the author in exchange for an honest review. Thank you, Livia, for sending it again. Now, Whoa, and talk about another whopper of a book. This blends dark fantasy with philosophy and human nature and the exploration of it all and ethics and morals that are very different from that of humans and the end goal being quite curious by the time I continued and finished through this novella. It's really hard to describe this one because it has an exploration of time and identity of human nature, the exploration of discovery, and all of it done through experimentation, which albeit may be questionable, no it is questionable, in terms of our morals and ethics, it's really captivating because of all of these aspects. First and foremost, this is a standalone novella and I was not expecting the complexity packed in here because it also explores elements of philosophy and human nature and ethics that are very different from our own. I was left with moments of wonder, shock, heartache, and just utter fascination throughout the entire thing. As I am still kind of thinking on this, I really believe that the author did a wonderful job at incorporating these themes into a fantasy type story with alchemists that are basically experimenting the entire time and as they experiment their excitement for discovery and their frustrations at the walls they encounter in those experiments I was right along with them the entire time. As I mentioned, it does have multiple POVs and two of them are alchemists as they are sent on individual tasks by the leader of their order, the Rector. Now, Alain must take on a mentee and train them to become an alchemist and Verve must define an unexplainable phenomenon occurring in a human. Now, because their missions are separate, they go on different paths, they go through different experiences, and yet Livia J. Elliot brings it all together seamlessly by the time you finish this novella. So because these POVs are through the alchemists, yeah, you're, you're going to be in for an interesting perspective as their views of the world, morality, and humans are complex, and the author does not 
hold back on what that means and how it impacts the human's subject to these alchemist experimentations. Now, because the POVs are through the alchemist, I will say be ready for an interesting perspective from the both of them. They're driven by discovery and knowledge and their morality is quite different from that of humans. Not only that, it's a dark fantasy, so the author does not hold back on questionable and shocking scenes that do take place, so just keep that in mind as you are reading. I don't necessarily think it was that heavy in comparison to some other things that I have read in terms of grimdark or dark fantasy, but they were absolutely shocking when they happened and the author did not hold back from that point on. So yes, just keep that in mind, but it made it absolutely fascinating to see a different form of philosophy and morals in terms of this exploration and world. In terms of the world building, it is massive due to the usage of time, their impacts on the characters, and the concept of the towers where the alchemists reside. It just left me in awe at the sheer scale of it all, and there were sections I had to go back and reread to make sure that I was processing all of it properly because it is just a massive world and the concept of time can be tricky if you're not fully paying attention to the details as well. The prose also flows beautifully, articulating complexity with thoughtful intent while being woven into an engrossing story. It's rare to find a book that blends philosophy to this extent with fantasy and storytelling with such ease. This paired with the many unknowns and the enticing thrill just left me with a curiosity I couldn't shake. For all of these reasons and more, the Genesis of Change is not a lighthearted or a quick read despite its short page count. This is the type of book that will make you question, will make you think, as it has that philosophy mixed in. It explores themes of knowledge, bias, human nature, influences of the world, time, morality, and growth. It just is filled with questions and incredible world building to boot. But what about the characters? Now it does have progression to the characters and their developments, although it does feel more like a plot driven story from my own experience. As I mentioned, this is a standalone, but it is a prequel novella and it does set the stage for continuation with the record of the Order series. I am excited to see what else there is, and I do believe the author has been writing books through their app Unearthed Stories as well, which is an interactive story experience, so definitely go check that out too if you're into that kind of thing. And the author also includes a note section at the back talking about their inclusion of philosophy, where it came from, which was fascinating to read as well. So even if this novella isn't quite for you, I definitely say Still check out the author notes at the back because that was absolutely fascinating to read as well. After that, I read Deathless Beasts by Andrew D. Meredith. Now, this I started and I realized I got to about 100 pages and I had to start over because there is so much to this. You're just thrown right in. Similar to Malazan in a way where you're a fly in the wall. You are absolutely a fly in the wall for this as well. I loved it. I went back, I restarted the first 100 pages, better absorbed it, along with the characters and the world building, and this is just the start of something epic. This is multiple POV, follows multiple characters across the world, from those participating in religious orders to those who are sentinels and serving essentially as mercenaries on contract, and others who I, I can't name for spoiler reasons, but there is one I will mention who just is absolutely hateable, unredeemable in my opinion, and it's not that he's just an outright terrible person, it's just that I have met people like this in real life, and yes, he deserves a slap upside the head in my opinion. There are so many fascinating characters in here, and that's not even covering the world building. Like I said, there are religious order orders in this. There are people who devote their lives to their gods, gods who are playing in their lives and impacting the circumstances and situations. There are political things going on as well in the background, and it's 
all fascinating and how it's woven together. For me, this was just utterly engrossing. In terms of the characters and the world, I only wanted more. And despite having a character I absolutely despised, I love what the author did with him. He got his comeuppance time and time again, and yet... Yep, unredeemable, did not learn any lessons, was still a terrible character. And then you have the complete opposite. You have these characters who are in the midst of growth. There are others who are doing their absolute best and are still being pushed and pushed to do more and better and bigger things. It's just incredible to see the layout. And this is only the beginning. The reason why this is a little tricky for me to describe at length is because I'm still processing everything and this is only the beginning. This is the type of series where I feel the more I read, the more I'll be able to come back and look at this and describe it more accurately. But it really does just encompass the epic fantasy with a sprawling world that captures the imagination and before you know it has you invested in the characters and wanting to know where their journeys are going as so many things are foreshadowed in this. I, I, I could have annotated this because there's so much dropped and hinted to. So I am looking forward to continuing with Bone Trout, I believe is book two. And yes, I did do an immersion read of this as well with the audiobook. The author does narrate it too and did a phenomenal job with that. I would highly recommend checking this out if you're looking for an epic fantasy with a massive world, that foreshadowing, and the feel of something big coming in the end and just has you invested in those characters and the circumstances of the world. It has paladins, sentinels, it has religious orders, political machinations, and much more that's been alluded to in the beginning, which I'm sure I will get answers to as I continue to read. Now for the current reads. I have been reading Legacy of the Brightwash by Crystal Matar over the course of August and now into September. I'm about halfway through and I'm taking my time to savor it. I've been savoring a lot of books lately and I've just been loving that change, if you will. In terms of the story, it is a romance fantasy. There are it's just a oh it's a terrible world it's so horrible it's really dark there is no hope and i feel so much for these characters in terms of the world and the lives they live and yeah it's a little depressing in that regard I am wholeheartedly invested in the characters and the romance is all right in terms of a perspective of someone who doesn't typically read romance. There are definitely some moments where the romance hits and I just think how silly the characters are being and really I want, what I want to say is being stupid and making bad choices. But that is the character. <laughs> but yes, I still wanted to give this a try because it's been so highly talked about. While the romance may not be 100% for me, I am still whole, wholly invested in these characters. I want to slap some of them silly for their stupid choices and others are just darling and need to be protected at all costs. So yes, I am really enjoying the characters, the mystery behind some of them the murders that are happening and this terrible world and the fact that no one really cares is heartbreaking. There's a lot in this and I'm really curious to see where the second half of this book goes. Like I said, I am so invested more so in the characters and their journey and while Tashway makes some dumb choices, he's endearing in his own ways. He still makes dumb choices, in my opinion, and I don't know that the second half will change my opinion on that. Ishmael must be protected at all costs, as well as the female POV we get. There's just a lot going on in this, a lot that's being alluded to, foreshadowed to. This is a fantastic book, chonky book, in terms of its pacing and keeping you invested in the mystery that's going around while giving you backstories and developments and making you want to cheer for these characters or just be purely mad at these characters, depending on the type of reader you are. So I'm really curious to see what happens in the second half and where Crystal Matar 
takes this. Finally, I'm reading The Crimes of Rooker Flynn by A.R. Witham. I absolutely adored The Legend of Black Jack. And this is the first book in a new trilogy that the author has been putting out. That being said, this does take place a couple years after The Legend of Black Jack, but you don't have to read that in order to start this trilogy. The story itself follows Rooker Flynn, a rebellious and hot-tempered pirate in the world of Keymark, as well as one other POV from a character in our world. So this is a portal fantasy and man, it's a little darker than The Legend of Black Jack in terms of its hopelessness and some of the dark situations that these two characters find themselves in as they end up at the Locke Institute, which only has three rules. Obey your betters, gather at sunrise, and be inside by sundown. Now, this institute is terrible, to say the least, and there is a headmistress to this Locke Institute who is akin to this horrendous character from another series as best as I can put it in terms of her treatment of the so-called students of this institute, as well as ulterior motives that are absolutely going to be questionable in my opinion. I'm about 65% of the way through and wholeheartedly enjoying this and devouring it. I'm doing an immersion reading with the physical copy as well as the audiobook which is narrated by the author himself and he does a spectacular job just as he did with The Legend of Black Jack. So far this has been a lot of fun, some shock, some grand adventures, and some hopelessness all thrown in along with it all. So I am really looking forward to seeing what happens in the last 40%. This has been a fantastic read so far, and honestly, if you're looking for a darker read, but somewhat lighthearted, a plethora of criminals involved and bounty hunters, an institute that is way more than it seems as it's mainly just a front for something else, and mysteries and, and questionable behavior and psychology to those involved in it all, yeah, definitely check out The Crimes of Rooker Flynn. Oh, and there are lots of spiders in this, so you've been warned. <laughs> and that is everything. It's been a wild summer, but I'm really excited to get back into the routine of things to be able to post videos again and just get back into my regular reading schedule is going to be huge as well as I've missed it. And chatting with all of you, I haven't missed our chats, what you've been reading, what you're excited to read, how books have been impacting you, all of it. So leave your comments below. What have you been reading? And was there a book in today's video that stood out to you? Leave your comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves.